Hello, I'm Julia Bushkova, and today we're continuing our very informative sessions with Andres Terzik, the Certified Hand Specialist and Occupational Therapist. Okay, our next question in the same venue of physicality on string instruments on violin is about the bow and about the bow hand. So, as we discussed previously mm. about the pinky, uh, sometimes we, uh, the teachers, observe that sort of pinky mm -hmm. on the bow. <laughs> Again, it collapses in the middle, mm -hmm. and all teachers world over know that this is not good. It doesn't allow for any flexibility. We call it uh, the bow changes, mm -hmm. and I understand that it's called uh, reciprocal motion, motion mm -hmm. right? In, uh, physiologically reciprocal motion. Okay, so, but here's an interesting thing. So we know that that has to be remedied no matter what. It mm -hmm. has to be corrected. Nobody should play like this. But there is uh, an interesting uh, phenomenon that I observe that very few people, instead of allowing the joint joints, three mm -hmm. joints, to be out a little bit like that and mm -hmm. the motion happen this way, some students or performers go inside in that um, other joint, not the middle one, but the mm -hmm. other one. And uh, I must say that they usually have much larger uh, uh, movement, hyperextension, hyper mm -hmm. yes, than mine. So for me, it doesn't feel good at all. It just feels a bit painful. But for them, it doesn't mm -hmm. at all. And um, so what is your take on it? Is one more beneficial physically, medically, physiologically mm -hmm. than the other, or they're pretty much equal equal i would say so if you hold your hand up on the boat yeah. the one that you showed me obviously this is the number one position we've got slight bending in all of the joints so that one is my, the number one choice for being the most stable um, and then of the other two that you show me i would say this one slips out over the other one just by a little bit and the only reason is a lot of people are actually very loose in their their tip joint their dip joint is what we call it and so their their finger will kind of naturally kind of curve up like that and that doesn't really seem to affect someone functionally whereas the one where you're showing the small finger where it's locked out like this oh, yeah. um, that can actually create changes inside uh, the finger itself certain things can shift different parts of the extensor we call it the extensor mechanism the part that lets the finger open mm -hmm. can actually raise up higher on the finger and make permanent changes and then the finger could actually potentially end up staying that way um, kind of like on your left hand you can't really break out of that mm -hmm. that can lead to that whereas the one where they're kind of hyper flexed in that middle joint and hyper extended at the tip while that's not ideal this joint is stable and this one is relatively stable. It's stable in hyperextension, but there's not a lot of motion happening. Mm -hmm. So I would have to say this would be the second best, and then <laughs> the other one would be the least. Yeah, the other one is just not functional, but right. non-functional for us. That's true. Um, okay, so that, um, in other words, if I have somebody who only does reciprocal motion, mm -hmm. that way I shouldn't be particularly alarmed as well as long as they have no pain, Mm -hmm. no symptoms and function well correct right. correct but you can train to make that better you can train to make that muscle what i see that as when i see that is someone has a weakness of the muscle that controls the tip they mm. are not strong enough to maintain that posture which maybe if we did exercise and strengthened it that I they see. could be able to move into that posture with time i see all right maybe we'll ask you for some of these <laughs> exercises as well okay um Speaking of exercises, uh, since you have treated quite a few musicians mm -hmm. over the years uh, with various conditions, obviously, um, do you think we would benefit from a certain set of exercises that would strengthen overall, like all needed muscles in our hands? I would say that there are general patterns of movement that I see in musicians that would lend themselves towards specific exercises, yes. I mean, obviously every person is a little bit different and we tweak it a little bit to you know, match their instrument or the specific problem that they're having. But overall, I think there are definitely some patterns of motion that I see that specific muscles need to be worked on. Okay, that would be wonderful. If you can show us maybe mm -hmm. some of them right now. Right now, sure, right now. absolutely. Yes.
Okay. 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 The reverse exercise is an isometric exercise. There's different types of exercises. Isometric means that you are engaging your muscle, but you are not moving. So it's kind of a low level strengthening exercise. We use it as a precursor to moving on to things like resistance against weights or bands or things of that nature. So the exercise begins with a person trying to get their thumb into this nice okay position that we like to think of. And if you look at my thumb, you can see that there's a little bit of bend here and there's a little bit of bend here. So the thumb is bent. You're going to go from this position and you're going to hold about three seconds with light pressure. And the goal is, is to maintain this posture without collapsing into something that looks a little bit more like that. So you're trying to maintain the tip pressure for three seconds, and then you're going to go to this posture. So this is more of like you're just completely pressing your index finger and thumb together. And again, you'll press and hold for three seconds, and then you'll roll back to the original position, making sure that you have good posture every time. And then just going to alternate this. So we're working on thumb muscle control and stability with this exercise. Okay. The next one is just kind of a thumb warm up, so to speak. It's called thumb opposition. So the thumb is interesting because it flexes and it extends. It rolls out away from the hand, but it also rolls around. So the nail of my thumb, you can see that it rolls back and forth. So this is thumb opposition. So we want to do thumb opposition to our index finger and then to our long finger, opening every time to our ring finger and finally our small finger. So the thumb moves in a slightly different position for every finger. So the interesting thing about the small finger is it also has an opposing muscle. So there you can do this exercise one of two ways. You can do it where you're trying to oppose and that means that that small finger kind of rolls out. Or you can do it where you're flexing the small finger like this. And Julia tells me that this is actually a better posture for violinists. But you can do either no, one. Not always. Not, not always, always. No, not always. Sometimes it's good and yeah, we need to do both. Do both. We so do I would both, say yeah. for the small finger, practice both ways. Practice more. So opposition is more nail to nail. So the nails are lining up with each other. Flexion is more kind of a 90 degree angle with the nail. So I would practice both to get good small finger control. Okay. And then the next one I like to affectionately call the mouth puppet. I always think of um, Sherry and Lammy, which was a 70s TV show where she had a little sock puppet. And so it's the same basic concept. You're going to take your hand and make a fist and you can see that you make a little, the three little bones right there. You're going to lay your thumb across the middle bone like that. So you have a little triangle shape, little pyramid shape. And the goal is, is you want to maintain this slight amount of flexion that I have in both of these bones, not an extreme amount. So it's not like this. It's more relaxed, that relaxed thumb position that we like so much. And the goal is, is you're trying to open the mouth of your puppet without losing this motion. So you're going to roll in, you're going to roll out. Now, if you have a tight muscle here that we talked about previously, it's going to be really difficult for you to open the mouth. A lot of times what I see people do is they'll collapse here mm -hmm. like that. So they collapse when they try and come out because this muscle is pulling so hard that it doesn't allow motion at this joint. So what I always tell people is when you're starting out, it's better to have good posture and a tiny little opening in the mouth than it is to cheat because that doesn't further. gain you any motion. You want it to look correct with good posture rather than so that, cheating. So that will be then correct? Yes, try and keep it a little bit higher right here on that bone. You can see how a little bit harder it is it for you. To go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see, so. Julia's been working on hers. Hers looks good. Yes. She's got a nice, I guess, stick a finger in there. Yes. <laughs> okay. So there are three um, joints in the thumb. We have the what we call the IP joint or the tip joint. We have the MCP joint, which is the metacarpal phalangeal joint. You can see why we have nicknames for these. And then we have what's called the CMC joint, which is the carpal metacarpal joint. So we like to use those nicknames for those. So this is a resisted rubber band exercise for the CMC joint for palmar abduction. So what that looks like is you're going to take your rubber band and you're going to wrap it around the back of your small finger and then across your thumb. So it looks like this. So, so you get a little band like that. And the goal of the exercise is like that exercise earlier we did for opposition, you're reaching the thumb and the small finger towards each other. So you're causing the muscles right here to engage. And so this makes your thumb stronger 
so that it can get your thumb out and away from your hand more easily. So you're just gonna perform it for holding it for a second or two at end range. If it gets too easy, you can either use a thicker rubber band or you can take your rubber band and you can add another loop to it. And that makes the thumb work even harder because now the band is more resistive. All right, this next one is also a thumb exercise with a rubber band. And it's similarly, you're gonna wrap the rubber band around the hand, but this time you're just gonna go all the way across. So you're wrapping it all the way across the hand. You're gonna maneuver the rubber band so that it's across the knuckles and that it runs right across the middle of this bone right here. And this is a similar motion to the other one, but just in a slightly different plane. So for this one, you're going to bring the thumb out and away like you're holding a big cup. So you want the thumb, again, to stay in that slight bend. And you're trying to open that space up to make what looks like a nice C shape. So you're opening as wide as you can against resistance. So again, this strengthens the muscles here that oppose this tight muscle that we tend to get in here. This next exercise is good for the thumb and for the small finger or any of the fingers really. You can use a rubber band, you can use a resistance band once the rubber band gets too easy. Again, you can use various sizes of rubber bands. You can use a thinner, skinnier, longer rubber band. You can use a fatter, shorter rubber band. Just you want to be able to do the exercise with bands without pain. It wants to be, you want it to be slightly resistive, but doable. So let's say if the exercise says you need to do it for a minute, you don't want to have pain by the end of the minute. If you start to have pain with your exercise, you always want to back off on the amount of resistance that you have because that's telling me or you that the joint is too unstable to handle that amount of resistance. There's too much mobility between the bones. So for this one, I'm going to use it first with the rubber band. So we're going to get our thumb in that position that we love so much where we have the bend at those joints. And with your other hand, your unaffected hand, you're going to pull on the rubber band and try and maintain it. I'll try and make you see I have the ability to make my thumb collapse. Do you see how mm -hmm. it's not in a good position? So it collapsed like that. That's not what you want like, to see like right, here, right, right there. Mm -hmm. So what you want is you want to be able to maintain that posture. So when the band pulls, you stay stable. So the, there's no motion happening in your affected hand. All the motion is happening from the other one that's holding onto the band. And you want to be able to maintain that posture. If you start to notice after a while that you're starting to collapse, that's the time you want to stop because the muscle is telling you that it's fatigued and it can't do it anymore. It's better to stop when you're losing good posture and start again. Okay, so for this next one, we're going to do a very same, similar exercise to the last one, but instead we're going to use a resistance band. So obviously this is going to be a little bit more difficult to do. And again, you're going to get your thumb into that posture that you like, and we're going to pull. Or alternatively, if you want to make it more challenging, you can actually hold it steady with the other hand and use this hand to do the pulling. So now we're getting movement with the forearm. It makes it more difficult. So with this exercise, you can go all the way across the fingers. Again, we know that the thumb moves in different planes as you go across the hand. So as you get further away from its natural plane, it's going to become more difficult. Each finger across will become progressively more and more challenging. Mm -hmm. So by the time we get to the small finger, this is the most difficult. It's the most difficult to maintain. So I can pull with this hand or Alternatively, I can pull with this one. And you start to watch your fingers to see what's happening. So you can see over here, when I do this, it's kind of wanting to flatten out into that posture we talked about previously, where, oh, I can't even make myself do it. <laughs> where it straightens out like that. But that's what it's wanting to go into. And that tells us that the muscle here is weaker and the muscle here is stronger. So that means I need to start working on the strength of the muscle that controls this joint more so than even on this one. So that's the resisted band pulls. With this also, I wanted just to, to confirm, specify. So there are tiny muscles like here everywhere that, that help this joint to be stable, more stable than that one. So that, where, where do they run? Are they like the inside or the outside? Mm -hmm. or? So I'll use my small finger since it's closest to the camera. On the outside of your finger, on the outside of the bones running from here to here and then from here to here, so bone to bone, bone to bone, we have what's called ligaments. 
Um, we have those on both sides and those are responsible for stability so that when my ping finger gets pushed to the side that it doesn't dislocate. Um, on top of the finger and on the bottom side of the finger we have tendons and tendons connect bone to muscle and the muscles are usually back in the forearm so the ligaments are on the side and then the tendons are on the top and the bottom so when the tendon that's attached to the muscle engages it causes the finger to bend. That's why our fingers don't bend from side to side. They only bend, bend down way. and up. I see. So when we're talking about strengthening the muscles that here, we're actually referring to the mm -hmm. muscles that are there. Correct. So this is more like a euphemism, strengthening the muscles of this joint or that one, right? So, yeah, so we're thinking about the muscles from underneath. So we're talking about strengthening those. So, but there are some, so there are some muscles as well um, as tiny fibers. There are, fibers, so 50 percent of the muscles that control the hand are begin in the forearm. Uh -huh. The other 50 percent of the muscles are actually inside the hand. So I we call see. these intrinsic muscles. They're intrinsic to the hand, whereas these are extrinsic mm -hmm. muscles. I see. So the intrinsic muscles of the hand, there's only a few of them. One of their motions is that they do this, mm -hmm. um, one of them is that they do this, and then there's a couple of thumb ones that are just inside the hand. So it's 50% here, 50% here. All right. So continuing on with exercises that are helpful for the thumb and for the fingers, like the last one we did, the resisted band exercise, the next one we're going to do is also using a band. And these come in different resistances, so you can pretty much use any band that you have. You just may need to um, hold it in a slightly different place. The stronger the band that you have, the more length you want to have. The easier the band is, you would tighten up on it so that you would have less resistance. So for this one, you're going to take your band and you're just going to wrap it around your fingers tightly. Sometimes I even put a little twist in there just to make it a little bit more stable. And then I'm going to pull down and hold it a little bit further down because this is a tighter band and then what you're going to do is just pull with your opposite hand and you're going to try and bend your fingers down into a fist so you're just grabbing and pulling and you're maintaining resistance with this other hand the entire time you're not letting go each time you maintain resistance as you're going down into flexion and you're maintaining resistance as you're going out into extension or straightening and so this works all of the muscles that control the fingers, the four lesser fingers, we would say. May I ask just uh, that when you do this, there's a little bit of bend here, mm -hmm. correct? We are just going correct. into what's comfortable. Yes. Okay. All right, moving back to the rubber band exercise, I'm going to use this one here. There's a very interesting muscle in the hand. Um, it's a two-headed muscle, in fact, and so if you look at the hand, the muscle lies right in here. One head goes to the side of the thumb, and the other head goes to the index finger. So we can actually strengthen the fingers and the thumb only exercising the fingers. It's kind of an unusual muscle. So what we do with a rubber band is we wrap it around just what we call the lesser fingers, so the digits two through five. And we're gonna put it here, and then I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna double it around the index finger again. So I wanna add more resistance to the index finger. And then I'm going to relax my hand, kind of just in that natural hand position that we love so much, like this. Then, when I have this finger here, everybody else stays still. The, the thumb stays still, the rest of the fingers stay still. And then I lift my finger while it's still bent up into this posture. It's almost like clamshell exercises for the legs. So when this muscle fires off, this is an especially good exercise for violinists because you showed me that the index finger often has pressure against the nut. Mm -hmm. And so this would increase your stability there while it also increases the stability of the thumb without ever having to do an exercise for the thumb. So let's say for example, maybe the thumb is inflamed and you still need to strengthen it, but you can't act, do active resistance at the time, you can do this exercise and this will do both fingers. It will strengthen both of them. We use this exercise a lot for people with arthritis as well. All right, the last two exercises for the fingers involve putty. And before you ask, it's not uh, Play-Doh. <laughs> Everybody always thinks, well, I can just go buy Play-Doh at the store. No, putty comes in different resistances. Um, I tell my patients all the time just to get theirs on Amazon. They're actually pretty inexpensive. So this is a fairly large amount. It's hard to get out of the container because it's a little bit sticky. And note on putty, it does love fabric, so don't let it get on your clothing because it will stay forever. All right. Uh, what is the recommended beginning uh, firmness of the putty? Um, 
every brand is a little bit different, but I would say um, soft to medium. So soft, to medium. soft sounds really soft, but it's not soft. It's a good starting point. And medium is actually pretty firm. So especially if you have weakness. Now, if you are if you already have very strong hands, then I might say um, firm would be a good one to go with. But this is this is actually technically soft, and this it can be a challenge for me at times, depending on the exercise. So this one is called finger ab and adduction. So we talked earlier about that. There's a muscle muscle that performs this motion. We call this abduction and adduction of the fingers. The interesting thing about this muscle is that you would think, well, that's not very important. However, the muscle actually attaches to one of your long flexors that bends the fingers like this. So if we strengthen the muscle by performing this simple motion, it actually makes your grip st strength stronger. So you're getting a two for one with this one. So you put your fingers down on the putty and dig down a little bit, not too far. The further you go down into the putty, the more challenging it is. But you're gonna dig down your fingers a little bit and I'll see if I can hold it up, get a better angle, kind of like this. And then you're going to squeeze your fingers together. The trick is to keep your hand flat. You can even see my knuckles have bent up a little bit. That shows me that there's weakness. And then you're going to slide your fingers out and away like this. And then you'll go back to the starting position again. And you can see my little fingers taking a while. And this is me going full effort. So this is not a fast exercise. It cannot be performed quickly if you're doing it properly. It definitely takes some time. So you just kind of do this until your putty flattens out. And then you just take your putty and you reform it again. And you start all over again. And uh, may I just ask, so mm -hmm. right now when you were showing, you were showing it a bit more to the camera. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if for instance, for oh, sure. yeah, it would be just the hand will be here, right? Okay. It has to be flat sure. on the table. Okay, no, okay. I'm not going to do it because I don't think <laughs> I will be doing it very well. But, you know, yes, my I can see that my pinky is definitely straining. Straining. Yeah. And it's also almost hyperextending right yeah, here as well. Yeah, hyperextending, yeah. Uh, so you have nice, you, yep. But then I have to keep it down because they want to go like this. Mm -hmm, you want I should not let it right. go like this. But okay. sometimes when this happens, so go ahead and do it again for me if you don't mind. If this happens, put mm -hmm. your finger underneath mm -hmm. just on that one, just to give him a little bit of support. Okay. Because he's just too weak at this time. But, yeah. And that comes from that position that you get into where you snap. Ah, mm. I see. Okay. So that's why you wouldn't want to do oh, that. Yes. Luckily for me, this is the bow hand, right. <laughs> which where we don't actually need as much, but here I'm sure it will be very mm -hmm. important. Perfect, thank Kay. you. All right. Okay, the last putty exercise that we have is very similar to one of the exercises we did earlier, which was opposition. So when we did the thumb to the each finger going across, so we did kind of the warm up. Now we're gonna do it in the putty. So you're going to have your putty like a little snake it's the best posture. And then again, with excellent thumb position, I'm gonna go in and try and get the tip of my thumb and my finger to pinch together. So I'll rotate it just a little bit so you can see my thumb. And you can see when I do this, I actually have to concentrate. If I'm not careful, I will fall into that posture. It's right there, I, I fell into that posture. And as I go across, Let's see what happens. Then you switch fingers, right? You switch so fingers as, you as you're going across. across. So mm -hmm. index finger. So some patients will do all of the index finger. They'll do like 10 times with the index finger, 10 times with the long. It doesn't matter. You can alternate them each time. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little bit more challenging to alternate each time because you have to move the thumb into a slightly different posture and so maintain good posture. That way it would be also very focus, much focusing on the thumb, correct? But when it comes to like pinky, it's also would then help to mm -hmm. maintain the good pinky. Right. So when posture. we're in this pos this position, we're kind of in a, a hook yeah, for yeah. the fingers, right. and so that position that you were talking about on the the bow, where mm -hmm. you're trying to maintain this this exercise yeah, is helpful for that because you have to maintain mm -hmm. that slight curve, curve as you're doing the exercise. So if you have problems in one hand, you can preventatively perform the exercises with the other one to prevent the problems from happening in the future in the unaffected hand. If you want more information on Anders Terzik, or if you would like to connect with her, uh, or if you would like to come for treatment or evaluation, 
I will put all the information in the description below. And at this time, I would like to thank you all for watching. I hope you are a subscriber. If not, please subscribe and like, and I will see you all later.